All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, it's so great to see uh, so many people turn out for our 27th Annual Hall of Fame and Distinction Ceremony. I'm Krista Montague. I think I have met everybody in the crowd, but I'm the Athletic Director here at MSU Billings. And welcome to one of our favorite events um, that we hold uh, within the Athletic Department. Um, as I said, tonight marks the 27th year of this very special event, and once a year, once again, we have a very outstanding uh, cast to induct into our Hall of Fame. Uh, we welcome just our 11th inductee in women's volleyball, and it's definitely a special one. One who was recognized as the Heartland Conference Player of the Year, and also helped her team um, to the program's first and only NCAA Regional tur Tournament appearance in volleyball. It's a very special night for our men's soccer program as they welcome their very first inductee. Tonight we honor one of the best uh, the program has been graced with, an NCAA Division II National Player of the Year who's, who still holds the GNAC career scoring and goal records. And it should be noted that he only had three years in the GNAC because his first year he played in the Heartland Conference. So his accomplishments certainly speak for themselves. Men's basketball has certainly enjoyed many successful seasons and many individuals that have had uh, a lot of success. Um, and men's basketball is the one sport that has been part of our institution since its inception in 1927. So tonight, we'll welcome the 33rd men's basketball member um, and uh, NCAA Division II All-American who earned over 1,000 career points in just two seasons here. Each of the three honorees will receive one of these plaques that you may be able to see up here, and uh, they'll get to take those home. And then replica plaques will also be placed right there in the gymnasium in the Hall of Fame uh, department as you walk through the facility and uh, into the doors to watch a game. They also get a golden lifetime pass for future Yellow Jacket athletics and events. Uh, Troy Trevelyan will now be making the round trip up from Phoenix on a regular basis to watch everything from soccer to volleyball to basketball. <laughs> Keep it rolling. Uh, we encourage you to visit that Hall of Fame area if you get through and when you get up to uh, a lot of you student athletes have likely already seen it, but for those of you who haven't, uh, it's right there in the front of the gym. We encourage you to take a close look at it. They've got some busts there uh, as well of some people who've made giant contributions. And I couldn't be prouder of the athletes in this room and the coaches and the coaching staff and the members of the athletic department for the way that they handle the programs here on this campus. It's really outstanding. And I applaud you for the work that you do. Thanks very, very much. Inspiring to see the reinvestment into that legacy. Um, being a student athlete is not always easy, but it teaches a lot of life lessons in growth, not only athletically or academically, but in life in general. Krista previously mentioned talking about gaining some perspective, and these sort of events definitely help you do that. Um, <clears throat> last week, um, I, had a very, I had a very serious conversation with my father about life, and he made a somewhat cynical comment. And he, because uh, I asked him, you know, as you've grown through um, your own generation, and I asked him, you know, what has been one of the biggest um, disappoint disappointments you've seen in, uh, in humans as you've grown up? And he said, Perhaps loyalty, because a lot of, nowadays a lot of people are only loyal to themselves and do not serve other people. But um, these three inductees, I think, definitely um, can emphasize loyalty not th to themselves, but to a purpose within themselves and to something greater, which is MSUB as an organization and athletic department, meaning that, you know, that they gave everything, not just for themselves, but they pushed themselves beyond the limit for the badge. And I think that's extremely important tonight to take away. So thank you very much. I use it all in my recruiting all the time. It says, be what you is, because you be what you ain't. You ain't what you is. And that's what Troy, what you saw him, you could take his, his statements to the bank. Um, and I'd like to tell you, Troy, never look back. The buggers might be catching you, so you better come on up and get your award, baby. <laughs> when Krista called me, it was last year, August, and I was at my house in Florida, and I kind of got the call. I saw a four or six number, and when she told me, you know, I was very excited. And then I thought about how I got to Eastern Montana, so. The way I got here, um, I grew up in Detroit. I have three brothers, three sisters. And we had a 900 square foot house. My father was a valet in Detroit. My mother never worked. 
and there was a two bedroom. My parents had one and my three sisters had the other. So all of me and my brothers slept in the basement. So when John Chambers, coach's good friend, recruited me to California, I'm thinking I'm getting a good rap. I'm going to California. I get to California, I'm staying with three guys from Las Vegas in a two bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying, I mean, it was a great school. I, I was playing a year, everything went good. When it came time, time for coach to recruit me, there was two things I had to have. I wanted my own room, <laughs> and whenever we traveled, I wanted to make sure I talked to the, 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 the teachers about getting the work that I would miss. He guaranteed me my own room, and the deal was done from there. He school I wanted to. This gentleman, he wrote a letter almost 30 years ago. This letter right here. I've had this letter with me since he sent it to me. The date on this letter is September 29th, 1987. And I'll tell you what it says. <laughs> he he handwritten this letter. Nowadays, if you recruit somebody, it'll be by fax or text or however you do it. He wrote this letter to me. And it says, <laughs> it's funny as hell because every time I look at it, I think about him. <laughs> because if you, you have to know him to know he's no nonsense and he's a man of very few words, but he's funny as hell. <laughs> it says, Troy. My good friend John Chambers tells me you can flat out play. <laughs> we are interested in recruiting you as a student athlete. Please fill out this form and keep in touch. Sincerely, Coach Wilkins. Now, who couldn't come here after getting this? <laughs> I mean, this was it right here. This was it. He hadn't seen this letter until today. I've had it with me through France, Greece, Italy, Australia, and I've, I've traveled all around the world, and this has always been in my briefcase. There's a couple of things I keep with me, and this is one. And again, you know, I like to thank all the other honorees. Um, I mean, I'm sure they had great careers here. And I tell people the thing that I like the most was the people. I'm just happy to be here, and I appreciate everything you've done. Like I say, Mike was a great teammate. Rick Langford is here. He was another. He came in the next year. He was very nice to me. And you know, I always keep coming back to Billings. Billings, it, it, it made me who I am today. You know, the things that I do right now it all come from the time that I spent here. So thanks again, everybody, for coming out. I'll be at the game tomorrow. It was a lot of luck involved and a lot of other people that helped me. And uh, Coach Wilkins is on the top of that list. So again, thanks, everybody, for coming. I really appreciate it. It's, it's very nice. I'm so glad you called me. Um, I don't know how they voted, but uh, whoever I need to pay, let me know. <laughs> <laughs>